good morning everybody. My name is Gonel Legal. I am uh, currently a PhD student at the CA Litty in France. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the organizers and the scientific committee committee to giving me the opportunity of uh, giving this talk today. And uh, we will speak about uh, alignment and uh, the physics of uh, aligned atom, uh, which uh, led us to design a dual axis single probe handler magnetometer. Uh, a brief outline of the presentation. I will present you uh, the helium-4 as a sensing medium for magnetometry. Uh, then we will see on the effect, uh, the way we designed this uh, architecture, uh, the experimental implementation we did, and finally uh, how to maybe go toward the free axis magnetometer architecture uh, by uh, some kind of upgrading uh, the dual axis architecture. So, um, First of all, helium-4 for magnetometry. The helium-4 in its uh, ground state uh, is a non-magnetic uh, medium. So if you want to probe a magnetic field using helium-4, you need to excite the atoms. And we use a high frequency discharge to excite the atoms uh, toward really high energy levels. And uh, they will uh, uh, relax through a radiative decay toward the 2 3 s one metastable level and uh, they will stay in this level for a long time because the transition toward the uh, ground state is uh, doubly forbidden. Uh, in the end, we have a paramagnetic medium uh, uh, at room temperature with a plasma. And uh, in terms of uh, magnetic multiple moments, uh, only the population is non-zero. Uh, now we can perform optical pumping to uh, create uh, an appropriate uh, atomic polarization in the medium. Uh, we can do orientation with a linear, uh, circularly polarized light, uh, which will uh, pump the atom from the M minus uh, one Zeeman sublevel toward the 23 p zero upper level. And then uh, at the end of the pumping cycle, uh, we obtain uh, an oriented medium with uh, non-zero mean uh, magnetization, uh, which can be described by, by this orientation vector. And uh, on the right of the, of the screen, you can see the, the um, different uh, mean values of the spin operators in terms of uh, the components of the orientation vector. Uh, what we are interested in is that since we have a spin one level, we can perform uh, an optical pumping using linearly polarized light, and this will induce uh, an alignment in the in the helium four. So the same process uh, goes on as for orientation, and in the end, we obtain an empty uh, mz equals zero level, and we have an aligned medium which has a mean uh, magnetization that is null, and uh, we have a quadrupolar magnetic momentum inside the vapor cell. And this, uh, this uh, alignment can be described by a column matrix. And uh, at the end of the pumping cycle, uh, we can uh, expect uh, a steady state alignment, uh, which can be described by, by this steady state ma matrix, where only the longitudinal magnetic multiple moment is uh, non-zero. And this is the case when the, polar the quantization axis is chosen along the light electric field uh, direction, which is the relevant direction of an aligned system. Uh, now I will speak to you about uh, Handler effect. So um, once we pump our atoms, we have this uh, alignment. And if we uh, put ourselves inside a strong magnetic field, like the Earth field, we will see Larmor precession. So um, Larmor precession the, it's, is in the case where the Larmor frequency is much higher than the relaxation rate of the atoms. In this case, the momenta will uh, will process around the magnetic field, and they will uh, perform several rounds before relaxing. Uh, for our purpose, what is interesting is the other regime, which is uh, called the Handler effect, where the alarm of frequency is much lower than the relaxation rate. And in this case, in a small magnetic field, the momentum will barely start to process and will uh, relax uh, much faster. And this leads us to this kind of uh, resonance that we call Handler effect around the null field. If you try to measure the, absor the absorption variation with uh, the magnetic field, you have this kind of uh, resonant behavior. In the case of Lama precession, you have a constant absorption around the B field. And in the case of Handler effect, you have this, uh, this uh, resonant variation. 
so with this angular effect, we can now try to build some, archi some magnetometer architecture. So in orientation first, uh, if we take a circularly polarized pump beam and we watch the absorption versus um, a transverse magnetic field, we see that we have this re resonant behavior, which is not good to make a sensor. We need a linear dependence to make a sensor. We can obtain this uh, dispersive dependence by, for example, applying a radio frequency field and excite parametric resonances. Uh, but if we want to build a dense array of sensors, maybe a radio frequency field are not the best because it can bring spurious measurements effect between sensors. Uh, so we can do this uh, in a non-optical way. Uh, using, for example, another laser beam that we will call the probe, which can be resonant with the atoms and uh, oriented at 90 degrees for, uh, from the pump beam to have the optimal sensitivity, or we can use a, a far detuned linear uh, light uh, as a Faraday probe to probe the rotation of the, of the polarization, as much of you, many of you uh, are doing in your magnetometers. Uh, so, the advantages of such architecture are that uh, you do not need for uh, radio frequency fields to measure a magnetic field, so you may not have any crosstalk between adjacent sensors in an array. But uh, it makes really cumbersome uh, architectures because you re it requires several uh, optical axes to uh, measure one or two components of the magnetic field. Uh, so, now we wondered if it was possible to build such architecture using uh, atomic alignment and uh, it turns out that if you use a linearly polarized pumping light, you observe the same behavior as in orientation, so, which is not good for a sensor. But uh, some studies have already, be, already been done a few years ago by, for example, Evelina, Evelina Breschi and uh, Anton Weiss. And they notice that you have uh, a dependence of this resonance uh, by solving this equation, for example, the Liouville's equation, uh, with the transverse components of the magnetic field. Uh, it then has been extended by uh, François Berto et al. Um, and to the transverse component of the alignment, and you see that you have a first order dependence in one of the transverse uh, magnetic multipole momentum. But the main issue is that if you choose your quantization axis along the light polarization direction, uh, the absorption is proportional to the longitudinal moment, which has no first order dependence with the magnetic field in this case. So we wonder, we found out that there must be some direction, polarization direction, that allow you to uh, have access to this first order dependence. And we wondered what are the polarization directions for which absorption has a linear dependence with the magnetic field. Um, this leads us to this theoretical study where we, where we choose to uh, pump the atom uh, along the z-axis and uh, then we perform a rotation of the solution of uh, the equation I showed you before with the spherical angles uh, phi and theta as defined on the, on the screen. And this leads us to this solution where you can see that you have a linear dependence with the two transverse components of the magnetic field in the longitudinal magnetic momentum. This leads us to optimal uh, properization directions that are given with these angles. And you can see that, as in orientation, they are oriented orthogonally to the component you want to measure, but at 45 degrees from the pumping direction and not at 90 degrees, like in orientation. And uh, here you have a sensitivity plot that is a bit gathering the amount of sensitivity you can uh, get from the orientation of the polarization in the 3D space. Um, now, the question to make, to design an architecture in magnetometry is how to send those beams. Since we are working with alignment, the, re the relevant direction is the light polarization direction. So, it means that we can send these beams a bit the way we want. And for example, we choose for the propagation direction to send them along the same propagation direction, which is the diagonal of the cube beneath the XOY plane. And if you place yourself uh, from this direction, the two polarizations are forming a 60 degree angle, which is rather counterintuitive. Uh, now, for the pump propagation direction, it has to lie in the XOY plane to respect the transversality of electromagnetic waves. Uh, but the main criteria we will choose is compacity, to have the most compact architecture. So, we choose the direction which leads to the smallest angle with the KS direction, which is the probe propagation direction, which leads us to KP, which is the diagonal of the square in the XOY plane, and it forms an angle of 35 degrees with the probe propagation direction, which is a rather small angle, meaning that we can send the two beams uh, through the, cell, the same optical axis. Um, now I will show you the experimental implementation of such a, such a shame. 
So this is the experimental setup we built uh, with the synoptic diagram here. So everything is placed inside a magnetic field, a ma magnetic shield, excuse me. And uh, you here have the helium cell in the middle, which is lighter than the pump collimator, uh, which is uh, horizontal, the probe collimator, which is uh, oriented at 35 degrees beneath the pump collimator, and the output collimator, which gathers the probe light at the output of the cell. Uh, as you can see the synoptic diagram, we are performing uh, optical amplitude optical modulation of the probing beam so that we can uh, separate the two different polarization and the signals proportionals to uh, both the BX component and the BY component. And it al also uh, allows us to shift the signal out of the low frequency laser noise. Um, now, the measurement we did is probing the angular dependence sensitivity with the phi angle. So, for the experiment, we fixed the polarization at either epsilon x or epsilon y, so either we want to measure the Bx field or the By field, and we perform magnetic ramps uh, at different angles uh, psi. So it changes a bit the correspondence between the angle because one is related to the magnetic field and the other one is related to the polarization direction. But overall, uh, we recovered uh, really well the theory uh, with a really good dependence of the sensitivity with respect to the orientation of the magnetic field in the X or Y plane. To show you the shape of the resonances, so we see that when we have a, uh, a magnetic field directed along the X axis, we have a purely dispersive shape of signal along the epsilon X direction and a purely resonant shape along the epsilon Y direction. If the magnetic field is oriented along the Y direction, we have a purely resonant shape for the epsilon x uh, polarization direction and a purely dispersive shape for the epsilon y polarization direction, meaning that we really recover the theory we, had, we established. And now I will uh, tell you a, a bit about uh, the, how we could extend this uh, architecture for a, uh, a measurement of the third axis. So, uh, we wondered if it was possible to probe the third component of the magnetic field, BZ in our case, which is the pumping direction. For this, we need to have a transverse component in the optical pumping steady state alignment, so that this transverse component will be able to evolve with the BZ component. And uh, to obtain such components, we may use uh, unpolarized light because unpolarized light may create an alignment along the propagation direction of the laser beam. Uh, for example, here you can see that uh, a laser beam propagating along the z-axis, which is the quantization axis, creates uh, this kind of uh, alignment steady state. And if you rotate this, uh, uh, this propagation direction, for example, along the x-axis, you see that the transverse component of the magnetic field uh, of the, there are steady state transverse component in the multiple moments that appear, and we may use them to measure the third component. So to come back to the, the architecture we made before, if we perform optical pumping using partially polarized light, so meaning that you have some kind of a superposition between a linearly polarized light and unpolarized light, you can see that uh, if you consider a partially polarized light with the linear part oriented along the z-axis, and uh, a beam propagating along the KP direction, um, that you obtain the transverse component you need to probe the third component of the magnetic field. And P being the degree of polarization, meaning that when P is equal to zero, you have a fully unpolarized light, and when P is equal to one, you have a fully linearly polarized light. Um, so now to find out the polarization direction that interests us to probe the third axis, uh, we solved the same UV equation uh, with the new uh, steady state uh, alignment matrix and we performed the same rotation and this leads to us to this rather complicated solution but what is important is that you have a linear dependence with the free component of the magnetic field in the longitudinal uh, moment. So the um, optimal uh, probing direction for the third component lies in the XOY plane along the x-axis or the y-axis and for the two transverse components, you still keep this uh, 45 degree angle, but the planar angle varies with the amount of linearly polarized light. And uh, the simulation results are this. When the light is fully unpolarized, you have a, a quite good uh, sensitivity to the third axis. And for the transverse component, the optimal probe uh, polarization direction is uh, the same. 
for both of the magnetic field component. When you increase the amount of uh, linearly polarized light, you see that you really decrease the sensitivity to the third axis, and you really improve the sensitivity to the transverse component. And finally, when you have a fully linearly polarized light, you recover the result I presented you before for the dual axis architecture. The main drawbacks of uh, building such an architecture is that you may lose the capacity we found for the dual axis because you need a third beam propagating orthogonally to the pumping beam to probe the last component of the magnetic field. So, uh, in conclusion, we performed a study about the dynamic of uh, aligned states uh, in, uh, in atoms and this led us to design a, a, magnet a magnetometer architecture that allows us to probe the two components of the magnetic field and with two polarization forming a 60 degree angle. Uh, since we can uh, combine the two probes in one beam and the, the pumping ring uh, forming a small angle with it, we can send the two beams through the same optical axis, uh, which makes a compact architecture. It's all optical, it doesn't require for radio frequency fields. There is a possibility to extend it to a free uh, axis uh, magnetometer, but you may lose the capacity. And finally, this work uh, highlights some atomic alignment specific and uh, surprising features uh, that may open new interesting architectures for uh, magneto atomic magnetometry. And uh, I thank you for your attention.